7, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Amen. When you can see it on the screen, say amen. And God said, let us make man in our image after after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Everybody say own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. I want to ask you a question tonight. It's what I feel the Holy Ghost speaking into my spirit. All of us a question. What are you reflecting? What are you, amen, reflecting? Can we say that together? What am I reflecting? That's what God wants to ask us. Amen. Let's give him a good hand clap of praise and you can be seated. Amen. Brother Cole, if you can bring my wife's mirror up here, please. Is that your my mirror or my mirror, baby? That's my mirror. All right. I do got one thing in the house. Amen. What am I reflecting? What are you and I reflecting? Amen. We're made in the image of God. And that's a very good thing that God was looking at himself when he made you and I. Image means a visual representation of something such as a likeness of an object produced on a photographic material or a reflection. And we understand that mirrors are there to give us a reflection. Amen. Maybe you look at your reflection or, amen, when you're fixing your hair or brushing your teeth or whatever. Amen. Getting ready for church. I'm thankful for mirrors. Amen. But the mirror can only reflect what's in front of it. Let's think about this tonight because I know we know it. But I want it to kind of seep into our spirits and our minds. A mirror can only reflect what is in front of it. Amen. A mirror is not going to reflect what is behind it. And in our relationship with God, we are the mirror. It's important that you understand what you are. Because the world is struggling with identity. And if we're going to be everything that we can be for God, we have to know what we are. I'm telling you what you are. God has taught me all of this in the past week, and I'm thankful for it. But you are the mirror in your relationship with God. It's God, us, which is the mirror, sin, the devil, and everything else. God, us, the devil, sin, and everything else. We are made in his image. And when God looks at you, he wants to see himself. I didn't know any of this. God taught me. So you're just going to have to take me at God's word. When God looks at you, he wants to see himself. Not the devil. Not sin. You know why? Why? Because that's what he kicked out of heaven. When God looks at you, he does not want to see what he had to kick out. There was a lady that I used to work with at Tipton. And this is a very sad story, but I want to tell it because it really backs what I'm trying to convey to you tonight. But her father was killed in a car wreck and he was in a Jeep Wrangler. And they had a lawsuit with Jeep because it was a malfunction with the car and there was a day that a man drove up in the service drive and her name was Ramona and she was a good salesperson and we were sitting there on the bench and uh, a man drove up in a Jeep Wrangler and she ran off screaming and crying and I didn't know what had happened and I was kind of just sitting there in shock and after a little while she went to the bathroom she was crying after a little while we had all found out that a man Every time she sees 
a Jeep Wrangler. It reminds her of her father's death. Does that make sense tonight? And so every time she saw a Jeep Wrangler, she would not ever want to see one. If there was one that we took in on trade, she would not sell it. She would not drive it. She would not have anything to do with it because it reminded her of a very tough and trying time in her life. And I want to tell you this tonight as a church and as the pastor of this church, every time God sees the reflection of sin in our life, he relives Calvary. Every time that we reflect anything other, other than him in our life, God relives the pain and the agony of Calvary. I don't want to remind him of the reason he had to die. I want to be thankful that he died for me. And there is a difference. Being thankful unto God because of the price that he paid on Calvary for you is much different than reminding him of why he had to die and why he had to endure the pain. Does that make sense? What affects God from seeing his reflection in our lives? Number one is sin. When God looks at us and when he don't see himself, when he does not see his reflection, the number one thing that hinders that is sin. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But, everybody say but. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear you. Look back at that part that said your sins have hid his face from you. Why does God hide his face from you when you are living in sin? Just as the lady that I used to work with would literally run from the Jeep because she did not want to see or relive it. God does the same thing with us. He hides his face from us because he does not want to see the reflection of sin in our life. Number one is sin that hinders his reflection in our life. Number two is when we turn away from following him or we turn our back on him. Isaiah 53, 6 says, And we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. That was referencing Jesus Christ. Ezekiel 33 Verse 10 says, verse 11, I'm sorry. Ezekiel 33, verse 11 says, Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God does not want anybody to die. He has no pleasure in even the death of the wicked. Amen. But that the wicked would turn from his way and live. You see that? Turn from his way and live. And ye turn from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Now let's look at this for a second. I'm going to slow down and let's look. It says, but that the wicked turn from his ways and live. Why did it say that? Why will you live if you turn back to God? Because you are what you reflect. And because Jesus is life, whenever you turn back to him, you will live. But if you don't turn to him and you stay in the direction of sin, you stay in your own path, you will die. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. And when you reflect sin, you will become what you are reflecting. The mirror is much clearer when it's clean. How many of you got dirty mirrors in your house right now? For some reason, my toothpaste gets on that mirror, and I have no earthly idea how that happens. But the mirror is much clearer when it's clean. That's why it's great that we live in a state of repentance. 
Amen. Because repentance is turning away from what I used to be. It's not saying I'm sorry and staying in the same sin. But repentance is turning away from what I used to be, what I used to face, what I used to reflect. And I'm so thankful that the day I repented and every time after that, that God washes me and he cleanses me and he makes me whole again. I I just want to spend a little time right here on that. Repentance is a cleaning, it's a washing, it's a regeneration. We will reflect what we are looking at. That's why it's so important. In 1 Thessalonians 5.22, it says, Shun or abstain from all appearance of evil. Now, I want to read Genesis chapter 19. Don't turn there up there. I don't want to, don't turn there. I just want to read it here. We understand that when Lot was leaving, his wife looked behind. But the Bible says, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back. Everybody say his wife looked back. And she became a pillar of salt. Now if you are a mirror and the only thing you can do is reflect what you're looking at. That's all you are is a mirror tonight. What you reflect is what is in front of you. That's it. And when she's leaving out of Sodom, Sodom is being destroyed because it is cursed. God is destroying it. And she turns around and she looks. At that point, she becomes what? She becomes Sodom because she is what she is reflecting. She becomes what she is reflecting. And because Sodom is cursed, now she is cursed. Because sin is cursed, when me and you reflect sin, now we become cursed. Amen. And so she became what she reflected. And so because Sodom was being destroyed, that's why she was destroyed. The Holy Ghost gave me this. That's why she became destroyed. But in Philippians 3, let me encourage you right here. Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. And I want to tell you today, church, that there's one thing that we must all do well. Forgetting those things which are behind. You know what keeps people in turmoil? Bringing up the past. You know what keeps people in hurt? Remembering the past. But I feel the Holy Ghost today saying on a Wednesday night, you need to forget those things. You need to stop looking at those things. You need to stop reflecting what is behind you. Those things that are behind, I'm going to forget that. And reaching forth under those things which are before. I don't, I care what happened to you in your past, but the greatest thing is what's gonna happen in your future. The pain of the past is not gonna affect the miracle of the future. The bondage of the past is not gonna affect the breakthrough in the future. But if you mirror what is behind you, you can never reach forward to what is before you. That's why it's impossible to hide sin. Everybody say it's impossible to hide sin. It's impossible to hide sin. Because all you are is a a mirror. A mirror will reflect. A image or a picture will show the details. And you know, the longer it's hid and not dealt with, the more destruction that it can have. But when you bring it to the light, when you turn it back towards God, that's when he cleanses it and he exposes it and he makes you better. But it's impossible to hide it because all you and I are are a mirror. Can I brag right quick on Sister Martha? And I hope this gets to her. But this has been in my spirit for the last day or so. Amen. It was about 4.45 in the morning and I'm driving in that ramp and I'm trying to find a place to park and I'm on the phone with her trying to figure out where she's at and where Brother Terry is and she's standing right out of the ER doors 
fixing to go back for surgery in a few hours, and she's got the biggest smile on her face. She's as happy as if it's a Sunday morning and she's fixing to teach her children, not knowing how the surgery's going to turn out, not knowing if she's going to live or not. But you know what? Your situation doesn't have to dictate what you're reflecting. I said your problem or your adversity doesn't have to dictate what you're reflecting. And in the middle of that surgery, she was still reflecting the peace of God. She was still reflecting the joy of God. And I could feel it and I could see it on her. Talk about conviction. Boys. Now, let, let, I, I, I mean, it's 445 in the morning. Ain't nobody want to be up that early, all right? I got the first parking spot because ain't nobody up that early. And Sister Martha is standing right there just smiling, fixing to go in for surgery. And as I'm putting together this message, I'm like, my God, help me. Because I, as the, I don't even know, brother, if I would be that happy. And she's just so happy. And I'm like, that is what the world is looking for. In the middle of adversity, they still want to see the reflection of Jesus Christ in our lives. That's what's going to change this world. It's saying, wait a second, you should be sad. You should be crying. Why are you so happy? I'll tell you why. It's because of what I'm looking at. It's because of who goes before me. For the kingdom of God... Is not meat and drink, but peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. And when that is in front of you because you are a mirror, that is what you will reflect. Let me ask you another question here tonight. I'm not going to preach long. It's 8.13, so I'm doing good. I preached an hour last Wednesday night. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep you at 30 minutes tonight. How long would you keep a mirror that didn't reflect your image when you stood in front of it? How long would you keep a mirror that turned its back on you whenever you wanted to see your reflection? Holy Ghost is talking tonight. You wouldn't keep it. Or you say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the finest of them all? Right? How long would you keep a mirror that you didn't know when it was going to show up or you didn't know if it was going to give you the reflection that it wanted? Let me go back and say this and really cement it in. When God looks at you, he wants to see himself. When he created you, he didn't have you in mind. He had him in mind. How long... Would you keep a camera that didn't take a picture of what you was pointing it at? You get your family pictures. Sister Audrey, y'all all out in the front of the barn with your ARs. God bless America. We may put that on the front of our car and divide them to church. They might want to come. But like, you come or we're coming. Come and take them. I'm just speaking. I love that picture. I'm not, you know. But, you know, you get in front of the barn. Anybody have a family photo of the barn? Jesus was born in a barn. I was, I, I, I was born in a hospital. But we lived by a barn in Woden. We lived by chicken houses. And you got to go on your back porch and smell chicken manure and thank God for the will of God. But how long would you keep a camera that you got your family just night, just right, Brother John, and you took a picture of them, and all of a sudden the image, it was the side of the barn. You'd be like, what's wrong with this? Well, hey, can I tell you, you are the image of God. When you cease to reflect him, what are you reflecting? Amen. How many of you have ever seen your kid do something that reminds you of their father? I got to get the ladies on my side tonight. He 
Sister Alma is just shaking her head. <laughs> right? Or you see, you look at your kid, it's like, his daddy does that. The other day, Adeline was antagonized. By the way, we get home. She said, Dad, I heard what you said at me at church. Stop talking about me. <laughs> Baby, I'm the pastor. You're going to have to endure it, all right? I love you. But Adeline will push you past your limit. I love her, but she's a picker and a nagger, a lot like me. And the other day, she was getting at her mama, picking, 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 picking. And she said, you're acting just like your daddy. That's all right, baby. But why is she? Because she is me. Your children are either going to be the best version or worst version of you. I hope you were good. But when God looks at us, he does not want to be reminded of the devil. God wants to look at us and say, that reminds me of me. Right? He said in John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. I don't want God to look at me and be reminded of the devil. You don't want to see your kids down. You don't want to see your children down. You don't want to see your children depressed. Am I being honest to parents? Those of you that don't have kids, you don't understand what I'm talking about, but one day you will. You don't want to see your kids depressed. You don't want to see them down. You don't want to see them discouraged. You don't want to see them frustrated. And can I tell you tonight, neither does God. You're his kid. He wants you happy, content, and fulfilled. God don't want to look down and see you sad and upset and depressed and hurt. No, he doesn't. He wants to see you okay. He wants to see you well. If you want that for your kids and God loves you more than what you love your kids, how much more? That's what Jesus said. How much more will he do it? How much more will he give it? Can I tell you, when all you do is look and dwell on the problem. I'm going to say it. I'm going to repeat this several times. When all we do is look and dwell on the problem, the frustration, the disappointment that is happening that is what people is going to see. When you are facing the problem, people is going to see the problem. When you are facing the frustration, people are going to see the frustration. My frustration may be something in my life, but it does not have to be what I'm known by. My problem may be something that I'm going through in my life, but it does not have to be what I'm defined by. Your problem, your frustration, your disappointment does not have to be what everybody sees every time they see you. You can still reflect the joy of God. You can still reflect the mercy of God in your life. What do you got to do? You got to say despite the situation, God, I'm keeping my focus on you. I want you in front of my mirror. I want the people when they look at me, I want them to see your image. When you start reflecting yourself, you then take the place of God. Self-reflection is pride, and that too reminds God of the devil. Isaiah 14, 13, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. This is the devil speaking i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god i will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north i will ascend above the heights of the clouds i will be like the most high i will be like the most high nope i don't ever want to be god i just don't i just want to reflect him 
I'll say it again. All we are are mirrors. What are you reflecting to a lost and giant generation? Are you reflecting your problem, your frustration, your disappointment? Or are you reflecting the compassion of Jesus Christ? Are you reflecting the love of Jesus Christ? Because when they see me, I want them to see him. I don't want them to see Brandon. I don't want them to see anything that I may have accomplished in this life. I want them to see the love of Jesus Christ in my life. Can I tell you, when I love like he loves, when I forgive like he forgives, when I endure like he endured, I become his image and I become his reflection. When people see me, I want them to see the God that is living on the inside of me. God, don't let somebody in need, somebody that has a problem, that is reflecting sin, that is reflecting frustration, see me walking down the street and all they see is more problems and all they see is more frustrations and all they see, I want them to see the help of God. I want them to say, wait a second, there's somebody that I know will pray for me. There's somebody that I know will help me repent. There's somebody that I feel drawn to. What are you reflecting tonight? Brother Joseph, can I get some music very lightly? What are you and I? I only need Brother Joseph tonight, just the piano. What are you and I? This is the question. What are we focusing on? Because that's what you're reflecting. Other people may not see it, but God sees it. And God is saying, hang on a second. I'm not seeing myself here. I'm seeing all these other things, and it's dirty, and it's... It's turned away from me. I'm going to open these altars tonight for anybody that needs a fresh cleansing. For anybody that says, God, I've let, I've let addiction, I've let marital problems, I've let problems with my kids, my finances, my mistakes of yesterday. I've let it, I've let it keep all of my attention. I've let it keep all of my focus and I have not reflected you. I have not been turned the right direction. I, I've turned my back on reflecting you, God. I've turned my back on when people see me, they see a, a person that's running, a person that is frustrated, a person that is hurt. But tonight, God, I'm going to turn and, and reposition my life to where when you look at me, Jesus, I want you to see yourself. I want you to see the image of the heavenly and not of the earthly. I, I want you to see compassion. I want you to see love. I want you to see hands that are reach. I don't want you to see my problem. I don't want to reflect my addictions, my problems, my, my situations to a world that's looking for answers. But tonight, God, I, I'm the mirror and I'm going to turn my mirror back towards the throne room of heaven. And I'm going to start operating with how I was created. I'm going to start reflecting my maker and my God and my king tonight. I, I'm frustrated, God. I, I keep looking at all the things that aren't getting better. But amen, tonight I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn my heart and my spirit back towards you. I'm going to turn my mind back towards you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, let us be a reflection of your presence. Let us be a reflection of your spirit tonight, Jesus. I pray, God, that when you look at us, you see yourself. I pray, God, that when you look at us, you see you. God, help us to be in the right direction. Help us to fix our eyes upon you. Help us to lift our eyes where which cometh our help and our strength. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I thank you for it tonight, God. I thank you for it tonight, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it. Just talk to the Lord. If there's things in your life that you know that, amen, is causing problems or issues, just bring that to Him. But say, God, I'm going to focus. I'm going to face. I'm going to be a reflection of you God I'm going to mirror you God in my life I'm going to 
I'm going to put off, God, the reflection of you in my life, God. And I want people to be impacted by that. You may be the only Jesus that somebody ever sees or feels. Hallelujah. You may be the only Bible that somebody ever sees or reads. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. There's some people talking to God. That's it. Hallelujah. Work it out with him. Amen. He's here to meet you tonight. Amen. He's not going to get rid of the mirror. He's not going to get rid of you, even though you're not reflecting him, even though you may have turned away and tried your own way. But tonight he's going to have mercy and compassion and he's going to forgive you and he's going to cleanse you and wash you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. position myself back towards your presence I reposition myself back towards your mercy Jesus hallelujah God I'm asking you right now God to touch and renew and restore people that may be turned people that may have turned their back or may be reflecting other things in their life thank you for it Jesus thank you for it Jesus thank you for it Jesus Hallelujah. We repent once again, Lord. We ask you to touch us and cleanse us, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people, the only time that they're going to be face to face with God or be turned towards him is on the day of judgment. That's the only time. But right now, you have the power to say, God, these situations in my life are not going to be what defines me. It's not going to be what people know me by. They said, oh, he's, he's just a carpenter's son. No, you're not going to be known by the bad or the frustrated or the problems or the addictions you're going to be known by the reflection of Jesus Christ in your life hallelujah hallelujah amen amen well, brother Rankin are you saying I shouldn't face my problems are you saying I should run from my problems no I'm not saying that at all I'm saying you don't have to reflect those problems in your everyday life. You can let God deal with those problems and you can still reflect His goodness and His mercy and His compassion and His long-suffering. You know, sometimes we have to ask ourselves this question. We're so quick to cut off people. so quick to limit their chances or give up on them ask yourself this question how many times did God give you chances how many times did God forgive you how many times did God restore you gave you another chance if I'm the true reflection of him it's not about me it's not about me God I was I was I was closing down the store I was running a store in Lufkin Texas and I was a manager there in a little sports store, and I was closing up the store one night. It was about 9 o'clock. That's when malls stay open till 9 before COVID. And uh, I'm sitting there putting a shoe back on the wall. This man walked in my store, walked right up to me, and he had tears rolling down his cheeks. I had on a black polo shirt and just some khakis because that's our uniform and he said you're a preacher aren't you I said yes sir he said you're a Pentecostal preacher I said yes sir he said as I was walking by he said I saw the look in your eyes and I could tell that you was a preacher and he said I felt the presence of God 
And as he began to talk, he began to, he, he began to cry. And he said, I'm a backslider. And I'm far away from God. But I know I need to get right. I said, sir, you listen to me. The next church you can find, you go and you repent and you pray through and you get your life right. Nothing of me. But there was a backslider that said, wait a second. That reminds me of something that I walked away from. Sir, who are you? You know what affects the reflection? Pride, problems, frustration. At first, you cannot have the joy of the Lord and be actively frustrated at the same time. You have to deal with that frustration. You have to say, God, I'm giving this to you, and I'm picking up the joy. Why am I joyful? Because he's given me the victory through Jesus Christ. I already have a mansion in heaven. Sometimes you got to get your mind off of the current problems and remind yourself of the future miracles. Remind yourself of the, of the promised breakthroughs. Amen. But when people drive by, I want them to see the reflection of Jesus on this church. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight. I love each and every one of you. Amen. Hallelujah. We're all in this together, and I'm thankful for what God is doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we pray just for a few more moments? I'm about to let you go. Just for a few more moments. Can we pray right now? Jesus, God, I thank you for this man and his family, God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, God. I thank you right now for my brother today. I'm asking you right now to touch him in a mighty way, God. In the name of Jesus, bless him and his family, God. Lead them, God, deeper in levels of you, God. Lead this family, God, to where you have promised them and where you want them to be, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank you right now, God. I thank you right now, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. There's some parents, there are some parents, and this is, it's 834, give me one minute. I, I learned this one time. Be careful when you tell the, somebody's kid who they look like. One time I told this mama that their little girl looked just like their little boy, which was nothing wrong with that. I'm like, they, she looks just like her brother. She got mad at me. And they were like literally identical twins. And I'm like, you're living in denial, lady. I, I didn't say that. But you got to be careful because some parents want that baby just to look like them. And they're like, nope, she looks like me. I don't care how much she does it. She looks just like me. God's the same way. He wants you to look just like him. And we were, when we reflect his compassion and his love and his goodness... But God don't want to look down and other people say, I know that's your child, but they look just like the devil. It happens. Yeah. When you're talking about that other person that's in the church, to your family or whatever, we've all done it. And point out their fault that you're telling God his child don't look like him. Because God ain't got no faults or problems. I better stop. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. I better, I better pull that anchor. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. We'll see you back Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Let's come expecting something great. Amen. The banquet that night at 6 o'clock. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming.